that gets you up to say, wow, okay, that's unbelievable. This is something that we can move forward with, or this is really compelling. It's getting to, it's getting to the human side of things. You have to be able to almost tell that story with the data before you actually get into understanding how you're going to apply it. Ultimately, to me, that's what an insight is. What constitutes a good story? How do you begin the process of telling a good story? In the outdoor industry, the word story gets thrown around a lot. And in my opinion, I don't know that it's an accurate use of the word 90% of the time. From my perspective, a good story does two things. Number one, it's a communication vessel. And number two, it has to leave an emotional response with your intended audience. Think back to all the times you've been in a marketing meeting and the word story gets brought up. If you think about the end deliverables, the end products that were created, how many of them actually left your audience with an emotional response. If it didn't, I'd question whether the story being told was told well. In this upcoming four-part series, we're gonna dive into the process of how to tell good stories. We're gonna talk about the elements of a story. We're gonna talk about how to better understand your audience in order to tell a story that they'll resonate with, that they'll enjoy. We're gonna talk about how to develop insights and using informed observations and insights to help tell powerful and meaningful stories for your intended audience. And lastly, once you have the vision for your story, we're gonna talk about how do you communicate that to a creative team? How do you bring on partners and team members in order to execute on this vision? So if you're interested, if you wanna geek out about stories, you'll definitely wanna tune in to these next four episodes. We've got some amazing industry veterans coming on the show to share their expertise, to share their insight. So if you're interested in storytelling and you wanna hang out with us, I highly recommend you tune into this episode. This is episode three of four. Welcome to the Backcountry Marketing Podcast. My name is Cole Heilborn. Today, I'm sitting down with Tony Sattler. He is the Executive Vice President and Director of Experience over at Swanson Russell. Tony, how are you? I'm doing great, Cole. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. How's your day been going? It's It's been going. You know, we've, uh, we've actually got a big pitch coming up, so been rather busy, uh, but uh, well, you know, I'm excited to be here. And uh, again, thank you for having me. Uh, of course. Well, I'm excited for our episode today. As folks know, this is number three of four of part of our storytelling series. Tony, we're going to be talking all about insights and developing insights and the difference between observations and insights and how to ultimately use insights to drive your storytelling and, and ultimately how to take information about your audience and then in our next episode, we're going to talk all about how to take it and deliver it to your creative team. And so this episode kind of fits right in the middle. It's the sweet spot. Tony, you've got a lot of experience in the industry developing insights. I'm curious if you could kind of give us a breakdown of your job at Swanson Russell and what you do day to day. Yeah, sure. So um, I, I run our experience team at Swanson Russell, and our main goal is to use data, real customer feedback, uh, as, as much as we can possibly get either through research uh, or live interactions um, or behavioral uh, data from the customers and the brands that we serve to craft insights that can drive great experiences. You know, and so I have a team of uh, producers, strategists, analysts uh, that work on my team. They call that information on a daily basis. Uh, we're constantly looking for new opportunities uh, to continue to refine and optimize and do everything that we can uh, to create the very best experiences for our clients. And so that's where the title of director of experience comes from, is that that's the ultimate idea, is that we're going to leverage as much of the data and input from customers that we can to develop you know, a, a more robust experience, uh, something that caters to their needs. And a lot of times it's just, it's based on the insight that they give us, you know, we're, we're, we're truly trying to cater to them. So when you think about a story, this is a question we're asking each people as we kind of kick this off. What is a story to you? A story is something that's captivating, that, that truly speaks to me and is emotionally resonant, you know, but it's something that I can connect to. Uh, and it's something that has a, a common thread that, that goes throughout that that moves me along that journey as well. And, you know, it again, in my line of work, it's uh, sometimes when you're producing things, it's it's dis disparate components. You know, it's it's a digital ad and a, a website or a landing page and an, an app experience or something along those lines. But it's that cohesion, that that through line, uh, you know, the, those beats of storytelling like that can come through 
in, in marketing and building a great experience as well. Um, and that's the type of stuff that really is, is moving to me. And, and, and that's how I, I look at a story, you know, like you have to have a, a great start, a, a, a climax and a way to wrap it up and close it out. And, you know, marketing is no different. But you see a good story or you see an exceptional story when you see it across multiple platforms, across multiple mediums. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. You know, because that that's how the, the human experience can work, particularly in marketing, you know, like a contained story, whether it's a, a film or, uh, you know, a novel or something like that. Uh, that's a little bit different than um, a, a marketing experience where you're maybe jumping between different channels, maybe different devices. But it's that through line, that cohesion, you know, that's based off of a human insight, you know, something that can be compelling to them. That tells a great story. Uh, collectively, right? It's all those components together um, that create a really great brand experience. It, it has to be, you know, a common theme or experience that goes through the, the entire, uh, every single channel that you're interacting with. So you mentioned that the story has to be compelling to you. Uh, you know, we just wrapped up an episode with Megan where we talked all about understanding your audience. Why, why, does, why is that important? Why do you have to tell a good story that connects with a particular demographic or a particular person? Yeah. I mean, it needs to resonate, you know, with an, with an individual. And the only way that you can really understand how it's going to, to resonate with that individual is to understand them, you know, at their core, uh, to continue to listen and understand what drives them. You know, what, what, what are those psychological uh, components, those behavioral nuances that compel them to want to interact, that want to engage, you know, and that's so important in, in at the advertising world. So leveraging that data and having real conversations with real people and getting to those those nuggets of, of insight, that's what drives a compelling story for us. You know, you, you have to understand what their needs are, what the problems are, what the tensions might be, you know, who's that villain that you're, you're working against, you know, that that ultimately is what becomes compelling, what resonates with an individual or an audience. Uh, so truly understanding them at their core uh, it is going to help you develop a better story. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so you mentioned insights. Obviously, you you deal with insights frequently. How do you define an insight? What is that to you? And and I guess what is it? So an insight to me is something that is uh, kind of a an obvious truth that you arrive at um, that may be something that you didn't know previously or contradicts something that you currently know, right? So it's compelling. It's a, it's a wow type of statement, right? Um, I think there's a lot of confusion, particularly in the marketing world, uh, around what actually is an insight or what constitutes an insight. And unfortunately, this has been exacerbated by the the n numerous amounts of marketing platforms that are out there today, different technologies. Um, we, we see it even with a lot of the things that we work with. They talk about speed to insight. They talk about data points that they call insights. Those are not insights. Those are simply data points. Um, and... The unfortunate thing about that is because of the vernacular that's used, it's often confused in terms of conversation uh, within our industry. And so the thing that I coach my team about, and, and honestly, the rest of the agency, is that those data points are, are valuable, but you have to be able to connect the dots between all of them, all of those different inputs. And it might be a data point can, you know, combined with a conversation combined with some listening that you've done, you know, on a forum or on social media, uh, combined with some, you know, behavioral data that you have from interactions on your website, what is that telling you collectively? What is the thing that it's proving or disproving that gets you up to say, that's unbelievable. That's the insight, right? So that's, it's an unfortunate thing that the jargon and vernacular within our industry has kind of devalued actually what an insight is and how it can drive a great story. It, it's less about the casual observations that you see through data points. And it's more about weaving this tapestry of information together and understanding the nuance behind it 
that gets you up to say, wow, okay, that's unbelievable. This is something that we can move forward with, or this is really compelling to wrap a story around, right? It's getting to it's getting to the human side of things. You have to be able to almost tell that story with the data before you actually get into uh, understanding how you're going to apply it. And ultimately, to me, that's what an insight is. So there's a big distinction between an observation and an insight. And I'm imagining when you find an observation, you're like, oh, that's interesting. But when you find an insight, maybe it hits you a little deeper. Like I'm imagining this is an idea that comes to you while you're in the shower and you're like, oh my gosh, like this is it. This is this is it. That totally. And, and uh, honestly, an insight can really come from anywhere. I and mean, we've we've had these conversations internally. Is is we? It's a collaborative process, oftentimes, and and things strike people differently. Um, going back to what you were saying there before, Cole, like observations to me, you know, they're they're things that are like. Yeah. Okay. I, I get it. Right. I understand that. It, it's it's affirming things that you already know. Right. It's kind of closed off. It can be somewhat superficial. Whereas like a challenge, a, a challenge to things that you understand, or it's you know kind of penetrating in in certain ways, or it's starting a conversation, and you sit up and you go, wow. Those things are things that can come to you in a shower. They can be in a meeting. It could be from reading a transcript of an interview, or it could be, like I said before, where you're combining all these different things together and you're saying like, oh, there's something in there, right? That's ultimately the insight. It's got to challenge you to a degree. It's got to challenge you uh, in a way that maybe you're not expecting. And that's where I think the magic comes with us and why I say it's a collaborative process. Because I think we as individuals are stimulated by, by different things, right? But when you can collectively come together and talk about your experiences and what you're seeing with those things, and you start finding threads to pull in. And then collectively, you can come and say, like, this is, this is ultimately what's really interesting. And I think as an agency, we've gotten pretty good at that, you know, to say, like, okay, let's put aside all the different data points. Like, the, again, they're, they're, they're good, relevant things, observations that we can, you know, maybe pull from. But when we work together to understand, like, what's the through line, you know, how does this apply to also to our clients and the advantage that they can provide to their uh, end users? That's where the insight comes from, you know, and we want to make sure that it's as compelling as possible. You mentioned that the insight needs to challenge you. Uh, why does it need to challenge? Yeah. So the reason why it needs to challenge is there has to be built in tension right? Ultimately, you know, think about any like really good story, you know, there's always some kind of villain or, you know, situation or thing that's going on that that is going to help you tell a better story. It's a device, right? And so in, in my mind, um, and a lot of the folks on my team, it's like, we're, we're searching for those tensions. What are those things that are almost conflicting with the things that we already know? That ultimately makes it more interesting, right out of the gate, right? It can make it more compelling. So we're constantly looking for those tensions and how they align then with customer needs or the actual ask from, from the client or, or the challenge that we need to solve uh, in terms of, of this advertising work that we're doing. You know, That type of insight that is born in tension can help us tell a really compelling story and ultimately better engage the audience, you know, so it, it's important to have all of those inputs and all that background, but you've got to find those things that challenge you and, and start digging into them again. Like I said, kind of pulling out those threads, those are ultimately going to be the points that get you to work together and say, Oh, this is interesting. Well, what about this? You know, and Hey, I saw this other thing about, uh, in this article, how does that apply to this? You know? That gets the gears going. <laughs> if it's just a flat sort of thing that's like, oh yeah, it's kind of reaffirming things that we already know. It's just not as compelling. It's not, it doesn't start a conversation. And so that's ultimately what we're always looking for are those points where it really challenges our thinking, you know, and it just, it spurs better ideas. 
you have any real world examples of uh, observations versus insights? Anything that you could succinctly communicate just to help us wrap our heads around this? You can make it. You can make it up too if you wanted. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so many. It's uh, you know, oftentimes I think what happens, particularly in the advertising world, is you know we look at like product features or benefits. You know, it's like, uh, you know, this this particular um, you know fishing reel, you know, uh, can can handle you know x amount you know more weight, right, right. And, uh, and especially when combined with this, you know, proprietary, you know, fishing line. Well, sure. I mean, th that's all really good. But like, again, those are just observations. It's when, when you turn it into more of like, well, how, how does that actually impact the human, you know, side of things, right? That's when it actually starts becoming more of an, an insight, right? It's like, oh, well, I was actually, you know, out you know, on, on the lake and I just caught this whopper and I, I was having a really hard time reeling it in and my line kept breaking. Ultimately, then the conversation becomes different, right? Like there you actually start telling more of a story and you got, so you got to kind of like flip the, the features or even the business challenge or whatever it is, like try and put it more into like human terms, you know, that allows you to fight against like just using observations or data points or anything else like that is like how is this actually applying you know to the to the human world right and we, we and we get that all the time from our clients as you know that more often than not marketing departments are focused on you know specific products or like a sales challenge or anything else like that so it's usually somewhat cut and dry and it's our challenge to like really dig into that and say like, but what is truly the human problem behind this? And so as we kind of go into that, we start, you know, thinking about like, okay, well, again, these data points, it might say that like, okay, this is 80% better than the competition. Well, that's an observation. Again, the insight is how does that 80% apply to the challenge that I'm having as an angler? you know, or as a hunter, whatever it might be, right? So ultimately, that that's always what we're after is just to say, okay, these observations are interesting. But again, like, how are we weaving this together? What's the through line? And the best way that we can do that as, uh, as advertising professionals is to what's the human story behind this? So Again, that's why for my team, it's really important to not even just like sift through the data to better understand the audience. It might be to have actual conversations with them and to listen intently. You know, that's when those things start to surface. That's where you really start to understand the human problems. And that's where you're going to start getting to insight. So an insight often is, is a contradiction or, or it's contradictory in some format. Have you ever presented a client with an insight and it's so contradictory that they're that they, they don't buy it they're like oh this 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 feels too out there like what did you come up with tony <laughs> <laughs> uh it it does happen you know and we've been in situations where you know they they're like hey we can't do that you know uh, and and that's okay but because like i think us in, in our line of work we have to challenge our clients as well. I mean, that's the value that we're bringing to the table. And 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 if we've been caught in those situations before too, Cole, where we've had something that we really, you know, thought was great, um, but maybe they thought like, okay, we're, we're not going to be able to take this this far. Or, you know, it's just so big and audacious that maybe we can't necessarily handle it with the budget that we have. Um, we find unique ways, you know, like that. that's the other thing about advertising, right? Is like, there's so many different ways to tell a story, you know? So what are like maybe key components of that that can still help us elaborate on the insight that we have that still fit within, you know, the, the brief uh, uh, that the client is bringing to us, you know, that, that fits the budget that they might have available. So sure, we've been, we've been caught in those situations where it's like, that's amazing, but probably not going to be able to do it. It happens. And, and it's just, you know, not everything's going to fly and, and we have to be adaptable as well. Um, but that again, it, it's, if we have that unique understanding of the audience and the user and a, and a compelling insight, 
that can still help drive other ideas. Because ultimately, like for us in the advertising, the insight and what we elaborate on that in goes into a brief. And it's, and, and, and it's supposed to be workshopped with the creative team so that it can accelerate their process, right? It has to be inspiring and compelling. And that's what, that's all it's trying to do is like that, that, that insight is just supposed to be inspiration to help drive, you know, an idea or a creative product. So, you know, they, they may, they may not disagree with us on what the insight is because we always come with the best rationale, you know, it's how it gets executed, you know, that sometimes gets maybe a little, uh, might, might change throughout the process. Yeah. Makes sense. So once you have a good insight, I'm curious how this influences storytelling. Why, why is this necessary or why is it helpful to, to find an insight in order to inform your storytelling? Yeah. I, again, I think it goes back to, you know, the, the human problem and, and the tension, right? So if the insight has those components and, and there's some, some nuance to it, it, it really helps us then elaborate on all of the different things that the story can tell. Um, it, in advertising, just like, I guess, in any storytelling device is like, you have to have a platform to work from. You know, I, I think of like the bigger, like movie franchises, you know, nowadays, like I just went and saw the new Spider-Verse movie. Absolutely amazing in terms of, you know, the, the uh, animation and everything else. But the thing that was like so compelling to me is that this connected up so well with a storytelling that they're going to be telling across multiple, you know, movies. But it's all based off of, you know, to me, I think an insight that they had about the characters themselves, right? But, and they made it so human, even though we're talking about, you know, extra dimensional, you know, beings <laughs> across a multitude of different universes. Crazy to think about, but really, ultimately, it's focused on a few characters ability to like grow up and make their own decisions. Right. And that's to me, like what's so exciting about being able to tell a story is when you can build a platform or a universe around it, that's ultimately born from an insight. It has so much legs. It has so much opportunity, you know? And I think every advertising professional would tell you like the best campaigns have started that way. And it's all just been based off of like just a, an understanding of a human element that resonates so much that it's just undeniable, right? And and the best stories are, are are born that way. And so, you know, for me and our team, it's like when you when you're able to arrive <laughs> at that insight, even before the creative is there, it's so inspiring and you just feel so good about it. It's just like the world is opened up to you, you know, and, and it's just a blank page, you know, that you can then go exploring with, right? Uh, so being inspirational is just like a, a big part of, of where we go. And if we know that we have that insight, it's just the opportunities are endless. The first thing that pops in my mind is you're describing like an insight that can inform an entire world or an ecosystem of storytelling um, was Nike. I mean, they're, they're perfect example. Yeah. They're a great example. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be really curious to understand. I mean, we could probably workshop it. Uh, reverse engineer it ourselves but like what the insight that they discovered was that informed their tagline of you know just do it i, I do you have any do you have any uh hints as to what that could be oh yeah any i ideas? mean well i think what what they landed on was just it's it's the competitive athletic spirit right like i i think like at the end of the day is just they wanted to speak to a certain individual that is that has that competitive drive that competitive spirit of, of never quitting, of never stopping and always doing, you know, like that, that, that was just, they said, this is the type of person that we want because they're the, going to be the influencers of any, and one one and everyone else around them. Right. And then they said, okay, based on this, we can go out and get all of these athletes to endorse us that are at the tops of, of their game. I mean, they, they were the original without even knowing it ones that started the influencer game, right? Nike started the influencer game back in the early 80s. They did. I mean, that, that that was what their entire brand was basically focused on there for a while. And so, you know, just reverse engineering it, it's just the insight that they they had that was compelling is like, we're, we're going, the, the conflict and what we're staying up against the tension is we're, we're fighting, you know, being stagnant, being average. 
no one wants that. No, no one, no one's compelled to be average, right? What you are compelled by is doing everything that you can to get better. And they said, how can we roll this out? It, it, how much that's been infused in their brand since day one, you know, is, is just special. And they, they're maybe the ultimate case study and just having that like very core understanding of, <laughs> of like human behavior and then elaborating on that and being able to tell a compelling story over decades, you know, uh, that's been consistent too, you know, which is incredible and finding new ways and avenues to, to do it as well. You know, like, uh, all the different apps and extensions and things that they have now that, you know, just bleed into, to fitness and other categories and, you know, different sports and, uh, you know, elevating women's sports just in general. I mean, they, they've, they've done so much, uh, with their brand and it all based off of just a core human insight. So that's what intrigues me is uh, maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding when you're talking about developing an insight, what an insight needs to be, because the insight for Nike is incredibly simple. It's a, it's a very basic human truth, but it's extremely compelling. So in my mind, I guess I was imagining an insight like has to be this complicated convoluted idea but what we're describing with Nike is that it's such a simple idea, but maybe it's 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 so obvious because it's so simple. Like, I, I guess I'm seeing maybe a contradiction in my thinking there. No, I mean, I think you're absolutely right. And I, <laughs> that's what makes it so compelling, too. You know, it's just like sometimes it's it's there right in front of your nose and you just don't know it. Because I think sometimes as humans, we can overcomplicate things, you know, and they they were just the first in an industry to just figure this thing out and, and understand how an insight can drive a, a storyline and a brand for decades, you know? So you, you're right, Cole, like it doesn't, it's never always like some big complicated thing. Sometimes it's just uncovering the truth or an, or an inconvenient truth, you know, that is just like, wow, I've known this all along, but we've never really recognized it that it can still be an insight, you know, like it, it doesn't need to be some ultra complex thing. And I, I, I may have mentioned it before, but, uh, you know, when we go through our process, sometimes we're going through reams of data, you know, we're, we're doing user journeys and personas and, you know, going through all of that. But sometimes that insight is literally a line from a transcript from an interview. So obvious. So, but it has all of the core components that say, this is right. You know, this is so compelling. This is an idea generator, you know, something that can be inspirational, you know, that maybe is super obvious, but still has all those core components of like fulfilling that human need, you know, understanding that, it, that it's a truth, you know, at the core, you know, it's believable, true, and relevant. And that ultimately there's some built in tension that we're solving for, you know, if you have those core components, that's all that matters. And so, like I said, it can really come from, from anywhere. And, and, you know, like I said, it, it happens sometimes in the simplest way. And sometimes it takes a lot, a lot of work, but uh, you know, like you said, Nike's a great example of just like one of those things that just seems so glaringly obvious, but you know, Hey, sometimes you're the first to get it you, and you're able to build a multi-billion dollar brand. out of it. <laughs> so, I'm curious to learn more about your process as to how do you how do you develop insights? And I know it it probably varies significantly, but when you're first tasked with, okay, Tony and team, we need to develop an insight. Like how, where do you begin? What do you how do you start? Yeah, that's a great question. So the process that we go through is really not all that complex, but there's a lot of tools and and technology and stuff that's built into it. So our our process always starts with the ask, right? It, it, it always generally starts with getting a better understanding from the client on what we're trying to solve for. And once we have that in hand, we try and, like I was mentioning before, we try and turn that business problem into a human centric problem, right? So we'll say, okay, you know, uh, we've got to increase sales in our turkey, you know, uh, gear line this, this season. Um, what's the human centric story that we're trying to tell there, right? So 
you know, in this case, we might say, well, in order to increase sales, we're going to need to get more, you know, uh, eyes on this. We're going to need more prospects in order to increase those sales. Well, what's a compelling human story to tell about, you know, turkey hunting? Well, it's, uh, it's ultimately, you know, kind of like it's an easy entry point into hunting and it's a lot like big game hunting. So for those that aspire to get into big game hunting, well, Turkey is a great place to start. Well, that there's an interesting through line there in terms of like the human problem that we're trying to solve for, right? So we always start there, but to generating the ask, trying to turn it in to the human problem. And then what we want to do is then identify the audiences that we're talking to, and then we'll, we'll run that through different lenses. So uh, we have a number of frameworks that we have internally at Swanson Russell. Uh, one of them um, that we've uh, really tried to adopt in everything that we do, we call it the four C's. It's a focus on the customer, the competition, the company, meaning like the product and everything else that, that they sell. And last but not least, the culture. And what I mean by culture is not like the culture within the company, is it's What's the trends? What's the cultural landscape that we're playing within? You know, like understanding the vernacular and the ins and outs. And that's been something about Swanson Russell that we've understood for, for ages, particularly in the outdoor recreation environment, is we have a good understanding of the culture because a lot of us live it, right? So we go through each one of those components and we use a variety of different research, you know, whether that's quantitative or qualitative, um, you know, direct user interviews, uh, you know, web, website feedback, uh, quantitative uh, surveys, you know, whatever that might take to gather that data. We also have a number of big data tools uh, that we use to build out audiences and segments. We then also have uh, the ability to do a lot of online listening, you know, whether that's through social media, forums, review sites, whatever that might be to get that true voice of the customer uh, and, what's, and what's happening within the cultural landscape. So we try and get all those inputs and then we do as much kind of culling and, and ideation and hypothesizing that we can. Uh, we call it trying to find the dig areas where we want to go. So taking all that data is like, this is interesting, this is interesting, this is interesting. Let's dig a little bit further, right? So then we dig down deeper, you know, to best understand like truly what's happening here, keeping that human problem, you know, in mind that we're trying to solve for. So once we have all that information and we've gone through those dig areas and pulled at those threads as much as we possibly can, we then collaboratively get together and we decide, okay, what, what's the problem? Okay, we've hopefully already defined that. What's the, what's the human truth? And then what's that tension? What's the most compelling of what we've found so far in each of those categories? Those things combined can then drive us toward what we would consider an insight. So if we have those components, you know, after we go through our 4C process and do all the research and, and kind of this 360 degree understanding uh, of the audience uh, that we have from, from all of our data sources, we can then arrive at those core components that, that can drive uh, an insight, you know, and like, but like I said, it, sometimes it's all this data, it's great, you know, but then sometimes it's just lying there in one statement <laughs> that you see on, on a social media comment, you know, in some like random Facebook post, right? So it just, it, it depends, but it's like, okay, is it fulfilling these needs? Is, is it addressing these core components? If it does, then we say, okay, this is enough to move us into, you know, an insight or something we can use for inspiration for the creative team. So you cast your net pretty wide, you scrape all this data, and then you just start going through it. And, and you're, what you're looking for is ultimately the problem, the human truth, and the tension. And if you can find those things, then you're probably onto something good. Exactly. Yeah. It, th those are, to me, the core components of telling a great story, right? And, and, that, and if, you can, if you have those, you can create that insight that can be that through line you know, and, and help and create that campaign or the brand or whatever, whatever it might be, whatever you're trying to solve for. This is interesting. I've never thought about uh, like a like a movie plot in this sense, but I'm looking at you know problem, human truth, and tension, and those three uh, characteristics. Like I think you could probably look at every movie and find those three. But I'm, this is interesting. I've, I've never I've never looked at it from this perspective before. Yeah. Well, and and the thing about that is like you probably will find all three of those in in a decent or a good movie, right? How compelling are they? <laughs> sure. So you're right, because you might have an insight or what you consider an insight, but of all those things, like, is it truly, you know, all that compelling, you know, is, 
it, it's the intersection of a lot of these things too, Cole. It's like, you know, you might have a really like obvious human truth, but that tension is like super taut, right? And because of that, it ultimately becomes stronger. Or you might have like just, it's a maybe a weaker tension, but it's something you're playing against. But that human truth is so strong. It's the intersection of all these things. And if you've got both where it's like just this, you know, super obvious, you know, human truth that is like just dead to rights. And then you've got this like really hard tension. Ultimately, that creates the best story. So, you know, we have our own rubrics internally that can't give too much of the farm away here where we kind of go through and assess, you know, where we land on those things to ensure that it's like a, a decent enough, you know, insider idea to move forward with. I see. So will you be identifying, let's say you have like three insights and then you're, and then you're evaluating those and making sure like, okay, are these actually compelling insights? Oh yeah. You know, sometimes it's like, yeah, we all arrive at the same thing. And if that's it, then we're like, okay, this is really good. Oftentimes it's like, I might come with something, you know, one of my analysts might come with something else. The account director might come with something else. The creative director has maybe a different thing. And then we're like, okay, well, these are all good, but what's, is there something here like combine? And that's where the collaborative process really comes in. You know, it's like the, the insight development and turning that and generating that into ideas is one that takes a lot of back and forth and, and collaboration and working through, and you know, helping each other kind of like understand and pull at those threads as well too. You know, sometimes it's super obvious. Sometimes it just takes some work and some collaboration and some brain power to really get to what we think is right. And, the reason why we do that is because it reduces creative churn, right? If we land on something that is really good, incredibly insightful, that we are all aligned on, then there's less back and forth through the creative process. It's like we feel really good about the story that we're trying to tell. We understand how much legs and opportunity there is there. Let's all go and attack it with as much gusto as possible, right? So when, when we do that kind of stuff, it just ultimately feels a lot better throughout the entire process. Yeah, you're not developing a brief and then uh, pulling it out from underneath your creative team because you and, and, come up with a new idea. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, or challenging it, you know, you know, months down the road. It's just, we don't want to do that. You know, it, like reducing that, this is just like operationally as an, as an advertising agency, we don't have the time to do that, you know. And for so for us, it's like, how are we getting to something that's ultimately really exciting that we're all getting behind as early in the process as possible? How can you tell if an insight is compelling enough? Are you are you running this past consumers and evaluating their reactions to it? Yeah, we do to some degree. You know, I mean, uh, not everything is going to be super compelling all the time, though, too, Cole, right? Like, we, we also work in a number of industries where it's very business to business focused, you know, and what what might not seem as like super compelling, you know, still might have uh, enough legs to, to drive a, a good creative campaign, you know, but I think for us, what we're trying to get to is just, again, something that we all feel really good about, you know, like, and that's, we fight that a bit with, with our, our group is like that, you know, sometimes an insight just isn't there. Right. And that's going to happen in the creative world from time to time. It might be based on the assignment. It might just be based on the nature of what's there, but you try and move forward with like the best thing that you can, you know, get out of it. That's at least compelling enough to spark some good creative ideas, you know? So, you know, we, we talk about like, just not trying to like, just invent something out of nothing, you know, it, that, that happens a lot in our industry. And again, it's like, you know, speed to insight and like those, you know, vernacular and terms that I was talking about before can really just cloud things, you know? So for us, it's like, let's work our process. Let's go through all of this. Let's still collectively come to something that we agree with. It might not be crazy compelling, but we at least all feel like it's a good starting point and something that we can run with, you know? So hopefully that answered your question. I, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, sure, we'll work through this stuff and make it as find the most compelling piece that we can, regardless of the assignment. Sometimes it's not all that exciting <laughs> or contradictory or like, you know, compelling, but it's still something that we can work with. Something is better than nothing. If you just have a brief that's just based off of, you know, features and <laughs> product benefits and stuff like that, that's really not going to get you anywhere. If you still at least have a story or a through line to tell, that's better than nothing. 
what power does an insight provide? I mean, I think we've kind of discussed this, but I mean, what does it ultimately allow you to do? I guess the best way that I can describe an insight is that it's, it's excitement. It's a catalyst. You know, it's, it's that, it's that golden nugget that just, you know, when somebody touches it, they just, you know, feel like I'm so excited to do this thing now, you know, it, it, it's opportunity. It just feels fresh. Right. And because of that, it's, it's inspiring, you know, and, and, and it just, I think as an agency that is filled with just creative minds, that's what we yearn for. Right. We, we want that level of inspiration that makes us feel so good about the work that we're doing and the, and, and the results that we can drive for our clients. Right. And so when, when we have that, ultimately an insight is just, you know, it's the core of our work. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's the engine that makes things go. And we feel so strong about it that we can't put our brains to sleep. You know, we can't put the pencils down. We can't get our fingers off the keyboard. It, it's just, it ultimately drives us in everything that we do. Hmm. Uh, you'd mentioned that in our previous, our, our intro call, um, that the outdoor industry has a tendency to kind of be the sea of sameness. And I wouldn't disagree. And I'm curious uh, why you suspect that is. Is that because there's a lack of creativity? Is it because there's a lack of, 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 of good insights that are being developed to differentiate? What's your take on, on that? My, my take, I guess, you know, the outdoor industry is just there. there's a lot of competition. And it seems like there's always, you know, new brands or uh, new technologies or anything that are like entering the marketplace that are going to be, you know, the best, right? And so it's a lot of kind of this, you know, feature benefit, you know, type of approach. Or um, the other side that I've seen of it um, in the outdoor recreation industry is that, you know, it's all about either machismo or like putting you into the environment, you know, so it's a lot of like that sea of sameness. And, and I think most of that is just driven by the fact that there really isn't deep insight and that it's really product driven. It's not really human centric and that it's more like product driven. I would say that like, you know, when, when you started baking in more of that, and we're guilty of this too, being in the outdoor rec industry for the last 60 years of, you know, that, that driving like machismo, you know, sort of approach and like, you know, broad vistas and, and all of that, like, yes, we've been doing that for years. And that, and that's just, that's table stakes. Now, what we see is like people who enter the outdoor recreation industry or getting into hunting or fishing, or, you know, they're, they've been, you know, experts at it for years. They're all individuals, but they all have like this nuance about how they go about it. They all feel like, you know, they've got their own handle on how they want to do things. Well, ultimately we got to get to the human part of it. <laughs> and that's what I think has been missing from the outdoor recreation industry is like, what does this mean to me? What's the emotional component that helps drive this story, you know, other than the product benefits you know, or the product features, you know, it, w when everything's an arms race, you just lose that kind of emotional connection and, and component to, to the story. And, you know, we have to remind our clients of that sometimes too, is that, you know, like, you know, yep, these products are great and they could potentially revolutionize an industry, but what's it ultimately doing for the end user at the end of the day that makes their lives better? What's the intrinsic, you know, component to this that makes them a better angler, a better hunter, a better hiker, a better, a better person, you know, like that, that part of it is some is missing from the outdoor recreation industry when everything's homogenized and driven by, you know, the, the arms race of the best technology out there, it, some of that just gets lost, you know, uh, you don't, you don't see the forest through the trees, no pun intended. Right. But it, it's true. I think that's just a big part of the industry. And so we are, we're always checking ourselves on that. You know, we're like, are we just adding to this or are we truly trying to improve upon it? You know? And so that I think for us is we're, we're really, you know, focused on, telling great human stories and finding new and compelling ways to do it. So that's interesting. I've not heard that perspective. So my, my interpretation of like the reason the outdoor industry is the sea of sameness is because 
I guess uh, maybe the way I see it is like, I think there are a lot of human stories and human truths that are being told, but, uh, and I guess I don't disagree with what you're saying, but it, it feels like they're almost all the same human truths. It's, it's about, you know, the, the peak bagger, it's about, you know, performance. It's about sustainability. Right. I, I'm trying to, I'm struggling to like come up with another one, but like those seem to be the top three kind of human truth that a lot of these brands are built on. Is that because those are the easy things to point to? Is that because we need, or do we just, do we need to get more creative? Do we need to become more nuanced? Are we, are we out of insights that can help differentiate companies in the industry? Yes, yes, yes. And no, um, <laughs> I, I think you're right, Cole. I mean, like it, what you what you just stated is yes, there are some definite human truths that have been driving the outdoor recreation industry for for years. You know, like you mentioned a bunch, uh, sustainability. Uh, you know, I mentioned things more about you know cheesemo side of it. it th those things have been driving the industry for a really long time. I don't think that we're out of insight. I, I think the challenge is we haven't gone deep enough. Some of these things are just very obvious and superficial. You know, and, and so what are we doing like to, again, understand what the human problem is that we're solving, not these things in big, broad strokes, but what ultimately what's that kind of core component that is like goes beyond even a human truth, you know, that is solving some level of attention or a need, you know, that that gets you to say, like, this is different. I, I've never heard someone talk about it like this before, you know. You might still have a lot of those same kind of branding components. Like you don't want to forget about some of those human truths though too, right? Like that's all still super important to the industry, but they are a bit superficial surface level, you know? Um, and because they've been done so many times, it just kind of weakens the threads a little bit. So, you know, again, that's kind of like ultimately what we want to continue to aim for is like, well, truly what makes this different, right? And, and how can we deliver it maybe even in a way that's differentiating our clients from their competition that sets them apart, you know, as a company that does a better job of telling the story and, and, and showing and demonstrating rather than saying, oh, well, we're just, you know, we're hopping on the sustainability train or, you know, anything else uh, along those lines. So, yeah, I, to me, I think it's just all about, again, finding those dig areas and then going deeper, you know, finding something that can truly be different and compelling. And I, you know, for for lack of a better way of saying it, I just don't think the industry has been willing enough to go much deeper, you know, other than like, again, some of the technology and the arms race side of it. And that's where I think like, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, it's not that we don't have human truths within this industry or, or insight. It's just that maybe we haven't gone deep enough to find things that are truly like driving a lot of behaviors and decisions and human truths. Because it seems like this industry as a whole has the passion, it has the the interest and the commitment. So there should be there should be a lot that we could dig and we could uncover. There's so much opportunity, so much. There's not a more passionate industry. I mean, you know, we work in a variety of different industries here at Swanson Russell, but man, I tell you, in terms of the type of things that we hear and the feedback that we get from our clients, customers, or, you know, the, the, when we do our research and we go digging and we, we try to understand these people uh, on, on a more granular level, that passion just comes through in everything. I mean, there's so many, we, we work for a lot of enthusiast brands. And so the opportunities are there, but you just got to be willing to take it a little bit deeper and to challenge yourself and your colleagues, you know, to take it further uh, than just the surface level. Hmm. Amazing. Tony, if you had to sum all of this up for us, why do insights matter? Why does this matter in the context of this series that we're doing? And, and if you could kind of pass the torch to the next episode, which is you've got this foundation now, how do you package it and put it into a brief? I guess I, I know I just gave you a lot there, but how would you kind of wrap up this idea? Yeah, I would wrap up this idea by just you have to understand the human problem that you're solving for. Put it in the context of a person's life, make it less product centric, make it more life centric, right? Find and pull at those threads as much as you can, dig as deep as you can to understand the behavioral nuances, to understand the things that might challenge uh, your client or your customer. Ultimately, those sorts of things together 
are going to help you come up with uh, an insight that is as compelling as it possibly can be. And when you have that insight that is just ultimately very inspirational and something that your team can rally behind, you have blank pages to write an incredible story. And people will be inspired to take it as far as they possibly can uh, and as creatively as they possibly can. So insights are that fuel that drive that creative engine. And I would just really, really recommend to people to just dive as deep as you can to find as compelling of an insight as you possibly can, because that will net you better creative results in the end. And so, you know, handing it off to the next episode, that's where it really comes in, right? Is once you have those compelling insights, it can drive the best briefs. It can spark conversation between the entire front from everyone on the creative team to come forward with the best ideas possible. So if you can get that kind of input and rationale and an insight into a brief, you're going to be setting yourself up for success. Amazing. Tony, we, we did not talk about any specific case studies or insights that you and the team have developed. We're, we're running out of time for today, but I would suggest people go check those out on the website. If they want to find more examples of work that you guys have done, if they want to connect with you personally, Tony, where can folks go to find you? Yeah, well, you can find me on LinkedIn um, very easily. Just search for Tony Sattler, uh, Swanson Russell. Um, if you want to learn more about some of these uh, outdoor rec case studies uh, that contain some really great insights, go to swansonrussell.com. In our work section, we have a number of case studies that are right there at the top. Each one of them contains uh, a great, compelling insight that has driven uh, a storyline, and uh, many of them are focused in the outdoor rec industry. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out um, either on LinkedIn or you can uh, reach me at my email, Tony S at swansonrussell.com. Awesome. Tony, anything else you want to leave our audience with before we sign off? No, I mean, just dig in. I mean, that to me, the biggest thing is just go and, and, and put in the, the rigor that it takes to get to insight. You will, you will for sure be happy with the results at the end. I think that's the mantra for this episode to just keep digging. <laughs> All right. Well, Tony, thanks again for taking the time to share. This has been a really, really fascinating episode. Folks, as Tony mentioned, the next episode coming up is all about developing a creative brief and, and taking this and passing it off to your creative team so that they can then go execute. So Tony, thanks again. I hope you have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll chat with you soon. Yeah, you too. Cool. Thanks.